Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode right here at Catholic Table Talk Podcast. This is the podcast where everything Catholic is on the table once again for this week. I want to thank you again for joining me on this very special edition of Catholic Table Talk. And I call it special because we haven't really talked about, you know, what is what, like, being a young Catholic woman, how does that impact your life? What does that look like? That type of stuff. Um, we have Savannah Dugzik coming on the show today who will talk more about that. She is the host of Classy Chicks Podcast herself. And uh, so she's gracious enough to join us this morning. Before we get to that, well, welcome everyone watching on video, listen to audio version like Spotify, Acorn, that type of stuff. Also, you have a show speaker request. Please email us at catholictt at gmail.com. Again, it's CatholicTT at gmail.com, the official email of Catholic Table Talk Podcast. And today's episode spot, so it is by Dr. Katrina Wynn. Uh, Dr. Wynn is a physician doctor. See how she can help you, your community, and your family out at mdkatrina.com. Also, you can find her with a bunch of other great Catholic doctors at mycatholicdoctor.com. Thank you for Dr. Wynn for spot soon today's episode. So with that being said, like I said, we'll move on to today's episode and really, at least as as of when this episode, the show comes out, is a lot of younger women are watching the podcast. Um, so I feel like this is really hits to the target market um, of the show. And like I say, uh, Savannah Dubzik is a uh, podcast host herself as Classy Chicks, so make sure you check that out. And she's, like I said, gracious enough to join us today, so uh, let's welcome her to the table for the first time. Uh, so, Savannah, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm very excited to be here. Like you said, um, I think that it's very, very relevant to talk to young women about how how we, we live in a society like ours that is ever-changing. Um, because the Catholic faith is unchanging, and there are certain ways that that we can live our lives in order to please God the most. So I'm very excited to be on here and just have a little discussion uh, with everybody. Um, yes, I host the Classy Chicks podcast, and I also write for a fashion company called Culture of Life Fashion, and I work in marketing for live action. Awesome. It keeps you busy, though, for sure. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically, we'll kind of get right to the chase here about you know what is it like being a you know catholic woman um like you said it's our society's ever changing um with just a lot of this you know transgender stuff going on the homosexual stuff all that different kinds of stuff um but like you said the catholic faith is not changing and we still hold to tradition so just i mean again take as much time as you like on here um i might have a pop-up question about it on here um but really explain what is it like from you know personal experience and just what is it like being a good uh catholic woman so i think there's that that's a that's a large question that you just asked what is it like yeah. being a catholic woman in our day and age and i actually just listen was listening to a song this morning that just recently came out from a, like an independent christian songwriter i forget her name but it was called the song is called for such a time as this. And I think that that is, there's a lot that I could say. There's a lot that I could start out with by saying, you know, what is it like to live as a Catholic in our world? What are the big struggles? And there are, there's a lot that I'm going to say about that throughout this podcast, but I think it's important to first remember that we're not here. We're not here by accident. And we all know that, right? We were made in God's image and God made us to be in this time and place for a reason. God put you wherever you are for a reason. God had you grow up in the type of family you grew up in, whether it was healthy or unhealthy, whether it was Catholic or not, for a reason. And this song, For Such a Time as This, is based on one of my favorite Bible verses in Esther that, is, that says, perhaps you were created for such a time as this. And basically, um, the message of the song is that you know, we might wish sometimes that we were born in a different time. We might wish that we were born in a time when there wasn't all this um, sex confusion, gender confusion. We might wish we were born in a time when men actually stood up and were men, you know, and when women, um, women weren't 
prone to being you know won't prone to being jealous and gossiping about each other we might wish we grew up in a time when there's there's been a lot of talk about this that i've that i've heard from a lot of young catholic women we might wish we grew up in a time when young women didn't have to work outside the home right where they could be homemakers and raise their kids and not have to worry about about money and stuff like that but the fact of it is that we might wish that but i believe that wishing that is disordered because we were created for this time and so we need to use the Catholic truth and the Catholic teachings to go out and better our world. God put each and every one of us in this time because he knew that someone, you know, who was, who was, who he put in the 1800s might not have fit as well in this time. So kind of honing in on that and shifting our mindset so that we're not thinking, oh my gosh, we're stuck in this time. Like we're stuck in this terrible time. I don't know what to do as a Catholic. I'm just going to stay home. I'm just not going to do anything. We should shift our mindset and say, actually, I know my principles. I know my stuff. I'm going to go out and make a difference because that's what God put me here for. So that's kind of just something that I'd start out with. Gotcha. No, that's a, that's a great point. And so, yeah, that was a big question. But yeah, thank you for that because that's, that's a great point. And just like you said, I mean, like going off and making a change. I mean, you hear people, yeah, you hear people all the time like, man, I wish I lived back in the, I grew up in the 70s or 80s and man, I wish I could go back then because that was my time. That was, you know, I don't like today's world. I mean, it's like, yeah, no, we we're still born. We're still living today for a reason. Um, as well as just a week or two back at my parish talking with a couple uh, mothers who are, you know, just really talking about stuff that is happening today in our society. And they're like, yeah, we can't be quiet. We need to, you know, set, we, we know what the Catholic faith is. We know the Catholic tradition we just need to be outspoken about why do we believe it and then you know keep the faith and then stand up for what we believe in um so right. and place. i mean i mean i think that there's there's a twofold there's a twofold aspect to this because yeah. you know we're saying oh we can't just stay home like we have to go out and you know spread the gospel spread the word well the first part of that is we have to know what we're talking about so exactly. i work <laughs> so i work full time in the pro life movement and a lot of people are like, how can I get involved? How can I help? What can I do? And the first thing I always say is be knowledgeable. Read some books on the history of the pro-life movement. Watch some YouTube videos. Read some blogs, some articles. Stay up with, stay up to date with current events. That's about, you know, half of my day is staying up to date with current events because you can't talk about something. You can't argue for something that you don't know about. And the more confident you are in it, the more effective you're going to be arguing it. So I would say for, for Catholic young women, you know, say, we'll just put this broadly, you know, a lot of the times when you, when you're like a senior in high school, you're deciding, what should I do? Like, should I go off to college? Should I uh, not go out to college? Should I get a job? Should I not do anything? Well, I would Firstly, advise you don't not do anything. That is a that is a phenomenon that I have been seeing lately in the Catholic young women culture. And it's kind of it's kind of tempting, right? Because there's a lot of uh Catholic influencers, Catholic people, Catholic speakers out there who are who are homemakers, who are stay-at-home moms and who love that. And that's amazing. That's what I want to be one day. But um young women see that and they say, "Oh, that's got to be me right now. Like I want to do exactly what they're doing. And so they decide not to get a job, to stay at their parents' house and to just kind of sit there and, you know, quote unquote, wait for a husband. Well, I would encourage you, whatever you do, don't do that because that is not what God is calling you to do. The, these years in your life when you're likely single and just starting out, you know, you're just a young adult figuring out what God has planned for you. These are the years when you're the most free to go the most places and to make the biggest differences. So I would encourage you to think big, to not not think about how, you know, oh, I just have to stay at home and like wait for, you know, my future husband and my family to come find me. Like that's not going to happen. I'd encourage you to think big. Go on a mission trip. Uh, go go speak different places in the country. Go participate in an activism event some in some other state, or just participate in your community around your house or uh, uh, in your uh, local area. So I'd encourage you to do that. But firstly, to be informed, pick something you're t passionate about. Because women, there's there's a great quote that I uh, heard the other day, and it's women work or men work for money. 
women work for passion. I think that's what it was. And I think that there's a lot of truth to that. Women work, women make a difference, women go out and do things because they're passionate about it first and foremost. So find something that you're passionate about and then take the steps that are necessary to get you there. Um, And in regards to being a Catholic throughout all of this, it's important to once, you know, once we um, graduate high school, a lot of the time, sometimes it happens when we graduate middle school and we get confirmed, but there's this temptation to like, oh, I know everything there is to know about the Catholic church. I'm just going to go out and live my life. Well, the fact is, obviously, we don't know everything we know, need to know. Priests study eight hours a day for years and years and years, right? And we, you know, we can take a couple hours out of our week to um you know listen to a catholic podcast like catholic table talk podcast to read up on current news events uh one peter five is a wonderful news site that i like to i like to read their blogs and articles and follow them and then we can go out and share that and the other thing that i would encourage young women is there's there's we get thrown thrown into this world right as young adults and we are going to inevitably make mistakes i've made so many mistakes in my life so far i'm going to continue to make mistakes but it's how we handle that those mistakes, I think, that really show our character. It's saying not saying, oh, we're this perfect little Catholic girl. It's saying, oh, I've made all these mistakes, this, this, and this, but I'm still trying and I still know what's right and what's wrong. So I'd encourage you to, you know, kind of take those steps, get educated first of all, but then also go out and find what you're passionate about, whether it's a Catholic niche, whether it's a pro-life niche, whether it's um, something, you know, a mission-based niche and um, go out and make a difference. Yeah, that's, that's a great response. And I mean, just for, you know, doing the, uh, like, like you said, the mistakes, I mean, just look to all the states. I mean, right. they're not, they weren't perfect either. Um, yes, there are states now, but they were perfect doing the lives either so not well, at make all. mistakes so uh don't be afraid to make mistakes and also just going back to like you know if you're in that high school senior who just graduated or maybe you're going to be the high school senior in this coming fall um one what you should do after school i totally agree with going out and trying to find something um just from my personal experience i did take a year off in between high school and college it was a year we recovering from covid so Stuff was a little bit different um in the society of how things were opening up and everything, which I'm not using excuse. That's you know, but and but it was like, man, I I'm just kind of waiting around for maybe the white right person to come along. Maybe it's you know, what the white right job. I'm just kind of saying you're not doing anything now. The podcast the podcast came out of that year, which is great. Well, but exactly, and that, that's what I'm saying yeah. is right yeah. is. I'm not saying, you know, don't take a year off. Don't do what, you know, it's different for right. everyone. I was just listening to a podcast actually about with, with like advice to college grads. It's different to everyone, for everybody. Yeah. Sorry, advice right. to high school right. grads. But like you said, you know, you took a year off to like kind of try to figure things out and you created a podcast from it. Like great yeah. things can happen from, right. from, from, you know, just time to sit and be being able to think with God. That's I'm not saying don't pause. I'm just saying right. don't right. think that it's the norm to not be doing anything because that's never going to be the norm in your life. Right. And if, I mean, yeah, and probably what I probably wouldn't have been if it, like I said, there was any COVID and it was like, well, what's opening up was not. So yeah, definitely go out and uh, do a, do the things after school. Don't be sitting at home. That is for sure. Um. So yeah, let's keep moving on. Um. Like you say, you I mean we all make mistakes. We're gonna continue to make mistakes. Um, I guess again, take as much time as you like on this, but for anyone who's listening about, you know, if you're in high school and college or just graduate college and maybe not really they're they were Catholic, but not really deeply devoted Catholic mm-hmm. for a while. Um, just maybe talk share a little bit about how the Catholic faith has impacted your life. Um, and stuff that you do and just like where would you be have you ever thought about where would you be if you were a catholic Mm -hmm. well i'd be in a very different place i don't know where i would be if i wasn't catholic i definitely would not be doing what i'm doing right now but um i think there's a lot to be said about that because we grow up whatever religion we grow up in 
we're, we're going to, <laughs> I'm not saying this well, but whatever religion our parents are and our parents raise us in, we're going to be that religion likely until we, you know, are done with middle school and likely until we're done with high school, whether or not we're practicing, you know, we don't get to choose what family we're born into. Now, I was extremely blessed to be born into an amazing Catholic family. And so that made, that made, you know, growing up very smooth, I would say that it, it really made it smooth. Our family, I had a very healthy family dynamic and I'm very grateful to my parents for that. But I will say for, for a lot, for people who might be like me, who kind of, you know, grew up in a Catholic environment, you know, went to youth group, went to vacation Bible school, went to, uh, you know, sang in our choir, did everything, I did everything that like, <laughs> uh, typical Catholic young woman would do, you know, and probably sure. more. Um, you get to be an adult and you're out on your own and you're ultimately faced with with the question of, okay, I was raised in this religion, but is it true? Because there's so many different religions. And the other thing is when I was young, I remember specifically, I was writing a journal entry and I was, I was, I don't know why I remember this, but I, I said something like, they're so nice, like, they're so nice that you would think they were Catholic. And I just, I had this thought in my head that people who were nice were Catholic, you know, you just, ha you, ha when you grow up in a religion, and when you grow up in a healthy atmosphere, you just have this sense of security and safety in your religion. Well, there came a point, and for me, it happened around, honestly, my senior year of high school. And it, I never, I never doubted the faith, but what I did was I looked into it a ton more, you know, I said, okay, I need to make this my own because everybody's saying, oh, Savannah's just this way because of their par her parents. And like, honestly, I kind of am just that way because of my parents, you know, of course I loved and I believed everything that they said, but I hadn't really looked into it on my own. And we're lucky to live in an age, we're very blessed to live in an age where we have infinite amount of information at our fingertips infinite you look up catholic podcasts on spotify you're gonna find dozens and dozens and dozens if not like hundreds of them you you go to a bookstore and you look in like the religion section a majority of it is going to be catholic books book from books from doctors of the church i don't think i don't know anybody in my life right now who is not practicing a religion and solid in their religion who is happy I know a lot of people in their 20s, in their uh, late teens and 20s, who are, you know, searching, trying to find the true religion. And when they find it, they're the happiest. So talk about being happy. One key thing to that is you need to be confident in what you believe in. And in order to be confident that Catholicism is the true religion, you really have to do your research. So that's, I mean, that's the advice that I would give to people. Everyone I know who has researched, who has um, spent time delving into Catholicism, delving into the doctors of the church, the early faith, right? Everyone I know who's traced back the papacy to, the, to Peter, to the apostles, everyone I know who's done that, whether they are Protestant, whether they were different denominations, right? Whether whatever religion they were, it all led them back to the Catholic church. So... My my advice to you would be look into it, right? And I know, and I think that sometimes people say, oh, well, you know, don't look, don't look into it too much. Like you're doubting your faith. Well, I actually disagree. I think that the more you look into it, the more you should be confident that the Catholic faith is the true religion. Because if you're not, then why are you Catholic, you know? Fine. So my my big advice would be, listen, you know, I mean, I'm a huge advocate of podcasts. I have a podcast myself and I, absolutely love listening to podcasts. I have podcasts that I listen to regularly. I podcast, I go and like do a deep dive on every once in a while, but I would, I would suggest for young women, especially, it's not always as helpful to listen to all the theological talks and like, it, you know, it is once in a while, but that's not what we want to listen to on a daily basis. Look for Catholic lifestyle podcasts. Uh, one of my favorites is called what in the dang heck. My podcast, the Classy Chicks podcast, is also a Catholic lifestyle podcast. Um, there are some other good ones, but look for Catholic lifestyle podcasts of other young women because it is always helpful to find people who are in your same stage of life who have similar beliefs to you. Um, so that's that would be my example for people. And in regards to where I would be if I wasn't Catholic, well, if I, I say this, you know, at least once a week to to my team members at my different jobs. You know, I was like, if I didn't have faith, like if, if I didn't, if I wasn't strong in my religion, I would not be able to do pro-life work. 
because it is so I don't I don't even know a better way to describe I just came to my mind but it is so um the the things that we research the stuff that we're putting out information about oftentimes is just so dirty it's just so dirty and sad and evil and just disgusting and we nobody on our team I don't think would be able to stomach it unless we had faith that there was something greater unless we had faith that this is not the end that this evil is not the end and that God will eventually triumph so I would say that anyone who's working in a ministry field I don't know how you you would do it without faith and but I would also say that working in some sort of a ministry field is my personal opinion the most rewarding thing no, I mean, I would have to agree with that on a good degree, just volunteering with Torch Activities Ministry stuff is a rewarding feeling. And uh, you do put in what you get. You do get out what you put into it. That mm-hmm. is for sure. So, yeah, um, great stuff. I mean, yeah, look at life more, you know, podcasts, maybe not so much the theology stuff, part of the Catholic faith um, as well. Um, just record, we're going back to previous episodes. If anyone is listening, I refer you to um, Why I Am Catholic with Doug Mayer on episode 20, as well as we did a three part series with a uh, non Catholic, uh, Troy Blanc, as well as a uh, pastor, Far Aaron Kuhn. Uh, three parts um, episode 82, episode 88, and episode 89. Um, all about an hour each, but there's great stuff. Well, questions on the Catholic faith um, that Father Aaron does a great job explaining. So I refer the arts um, to that to those as well. But yeah, get out and look for podcasts because, like you said, there's hundreds of them. And when I was starting right. this podcast, I'm like, when do what? How am I gonna make my podcast different from you know what kind of focus on? Because basically, you can find anything on the Catholic faith, like you said on Spotify. There, but there, but I mean, I mean, also to say though, there are so many different perspectives, right? right so right. your your Catholic Table Talk podcast has a completely unique perspective than some than some other Catholic podcast. So it's just you know finding your niche, finding what kind of a style you like. It's the best. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um. So yeah, I mean, just kind of wrapping up here in a short bit. Um, but just kind of like see. You're very, you find it very rewarding working in ministry work and everything. And you're very active in the core life. And thank you for doing that because we need more people in the core life movement in today's society. Um, so, like, how do you, I mean, you kind of maybe gave a couple of examples on that answer as well, but how do you inspire Catholic women today? Like, how do you, has anyone come up to you and say, thank you, Savannah, that? You know, your full life work has really inspired me. The podcast has inspired me. Has anyone said anything to you about that? Oh, yeah, all the time. If the thing is, everything that I do, right, I do for the glory of God. But right. what the reason I started my podcast was for Catholic young women, young women, Christian young women, you know, and the reason that I the reason that I do so much honestly on social media is for young women in particular. So if I wasn't getting regular DMs uh face to face even when you know when I'll meet people at conferences or whatever saying thank you for what you post about, thank you for what you talk about, you know, I needed to hear that kind of stuff. I all the time I'll I'll post something on my story or like I'll I'll be talking on my story and then somebody will respond like, "Oh my gosh, I needed to hear that today." We I don't think I don't think that's me. I think that that's the Holy Spirit working through me. But I think that we underestimate our ability to make a difference. I have so many friends who are like, "Oh, I love what you like do, Savannah," but I can't do that because I don't I don't have a following. I don't have a platform. Well, I don't have a big following either. Um, and I didn't start out with a big following. You know, I had my social media was quote unquote like regular, or just like personal up until like a year and a half ago. And I had like 100 or 200 followers, right? Of just my friends. You have to start somewhere. So that's always my my um, conversation started to people when they ask, how do I like, how do I influence people? How do I like do that? And first of all, my thing is you need to be living a genuine life. And this is just such a balance that I struggle with. I know a lot of other Catholic people who are online struggle with this as well. If you're not living 
if you're not living a genuine authentic life, people are going to see that and they're not going to they're not going to feel like they want to take advice from you. I don't want to take advice from people that I see living an unauthentic life online and then in person they're a different way. Right. It should be um you should be the same in person as you are online, you know, as as similar as possible. Obviously, it's going to be different. But my main goal is not to inspire people through social media. My main goal is to inspire people through the way I live my life. It's for people to see my life and say that there's something about her. Like there's something different about her than the majority of people who are living in the world. And that's something I want. And when they say that, I can direct them to Jesus. You know, I can direct them to God. I can say that, well, the difference that you see in me is that I have a purpose and I'm not going to settle and I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to stop until I succeed and until I continue to give glory to God in my life. So that is, that is my main goal is to show young women that, and the other thing that I like to say as well is when I was younger, when I was like in high school, college, stuff like that, I, I saw a lot of great young moms and I saw a lot of not, not necessarily young moms, but I saw a lot of great moms, you know, women who were mothers, who it seemed like living, were living a wonderful life. But what I didn't really see was young women in their twenties who were single, maybe dating, who were living a good life. I saw the twenties period as just like a destructive time, right? Like a time of way too much drinking, way too much party. And I just like, kind of thought like, oh, maybe people just like have to go through that in order to have a healthy family. And that's couldn't be part, that couldn't be farther from the truth, you know? So one of my main goals is to show people that you don't have to go through that destructive phase in order to get something beautiful. In fact, you shouldn't go through that destructive phase in order to get something beautiful. And so, but, but I also don't think that you should be going through a phase in your twenties where you just become a hermit and just stay inside and not do anything. I want to show young women. My main goal is to show young women that you can live a beautiful, full, holistic life and be Catholic. You know, you can go to those parties. You can go to those beach days, those boat days. You can go out with your friends. You can uh, travel the world, right? And still be Catholic and still keep your morals. You can date people and still keep your morals. You can live in our world very, very nicely, you know, in a very beautiful way with your Catholic morals. You don't have to compromise them for a certain amount of years in your life in order to um, get back to them. It just, it doesn't happen that way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, yeah, totally agree. I mean, like, I always refer back to what Jesus said, like, go and spread the good news. It doesn't mean we have to be talking the gospel to our minds, but just sharing the love and just being out in the community and um, sharing, you know, being a good Catholic witness in the community. That's what it's all about. So I totally agree with that. So thank you for that. Um, Of course. yeah, I mean we're to about to the end of the show. Um, just any last remarks about our discussion here today, and also where can people get a hold of you and for your podcast, uh, Classic Chicks? Yeah, I would just say for any Catholic woman listening, you know, or even if you're not Catholic, any Christian, or even if you're not Christian, any young woman listening, we women are inherently attracted to beauty. To beauty. Sorry, I don't know if that went through. Women are inherently attracted to beauty. And when we live a beautiful life inside and outside, people are going to be attracted to us. Now, I'm not talking about men being attracted to us. I'm talking about other women seeing that and seeing something different. You don't have to go around talking about Jesus every day. You don't have to go around with your Bible in your hands when you're walking down the street, right? People are going to see that beauty in your life and they're going to see how content you are and they're going to be attracted to that. So I would just encourage to any women listening, live an authentic, beautiful life and people will be attracted to that. Um, And the place that you can find me, you can find me a couple different places. My podcast is at Classy Chicks Pod on Instagram. My Instagram is at sav.speakslife. And then I have a website that's savspeakslife.com. Um, if you want to follow Live Action, I'm sure a lot of you probably already do. It's at Live Action Org, O-R-G. Um, and then, yeah, reach out to me if you have any other questions that I can, I can try to answer them. Awesome. Well, Thank you, Savannah, for answering um, my text about coming on the show today. Um, thank you for coming on so quickly as well. I really appreciate it, and I just thank you for all you that you do for the Pro Life community. Um, of course, everyone who's been watching the show, listening to the show, 
Um, last a couple of great episodes as well as uh, Chloe Kramer has been on the show talking about full life. So yeah, be active on the full life movement. Um, stay up to date with stuff going on in today's society and uh, follow the Classy Chicks podcast. So uh, Savannah, thank you again for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me on. Awesome. That is Savannah, everyone. Uh, make sure, like I said, go check out our podcast at Classic Chicks. Also, I have the links down in the description box below for you as well. Keep the faith and God willing, we'll see you next time right here at Catholic Table Talk Podcast for another great episode next week. God willing, this is where everything Catholic is on the table.